Welcome to the Glasgow Film Festival. Thank you all very much for coming to this uh, special screening of Beyond the Pole. Uh, we're very pleased to have the director and some of the cast here to discuss the movie. Um, so if you stay in your seats at the end of the film, uh, you can meet some of the cast and some of the people who made it. Um, before we do anything else, we're going to have a word from the director, David Williams. Uh, I believe the words are, hello, Glasgow. Um, uh, I just want to say that we're um, uh, so chuffed to be here. It uh, means an enormous amount to everyone that worked on the film. Uh, we didn't have a huge budget, but uh, what we lacked in budget, we made up for with love, I believe. Um, so uh, I actually, uh, 17 years ago, I met the um, future mother of my children here. So Glasgow is very important to us, and uh, I, b I believe the writer also studied in Glasgow. So it's not by design, but somehow we're here. You're one of the first audiences to see the film. It's, uh, I really hope you enjoy it, and I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you at the end and seeing what you think. Thanks very much. Enjoy the film. Thank you. First of all, gentlemen, can I welcome you all and ask you to introduce yourself and explain your contribution to the film? Hello, my name is Rhys, and I was in the film. <laughs> um, I'm David, I, I directed and produced the film. I'm Neil, I uh, wrote the screenplay. And I'm Rob, and I edited the film. The film originated with a, a radio series that was very funny and silly. Uh, it was six 15-minute episodes called uh, Beyond the Pole on uh, BBC Radio 4, and unfortunately for the BBC, they did not retain the rights, so I optioned it. Um, can I ask a little bit about the logistics of it? Because when I started watching the film, I was kind of like, okay, well, this is about a trip to the North Pole. They're never going to go there. And then as the film went on, I'm like, no, it actually looks like they did go there. How close did you actually get? We went to a place uh, called Cap Tobin, which was a village of um, 300 hunters. Um, and we were told again and again not to go to this place because they kept shooting each other. Um, so I was sort of determined that we absolutely must go there. And the reason that we went there was because it meant that we, instead of being on a glacier, which was very safe and had lovely hotels, uh, it was uh, a glacier would be flat. And the lovely thing about sea ice is that it is um, constantly moving and lots of different shapes and sizes and lovely blues. And yeah. Please. How much improvisation did you do while you were on the ice when you were filming? Yeah, with a lot of improv in the film, it, it did feel very natural. Well, yes, we did feel, I mean, I think that, you know, it, it looks quite improvised because I think we were given the freedom to basically not improvise lines, but sometimes say them in our own way, but not often. I mean, I, there are only two sequences in that film that are really improvised, but not even, when I say improvised, I mean in terms of there's a script and they say, this is what happens, and then say, you know, act around that. And, and I think the biscuit scene is one of them. <laughs> Simply because, you know, we hadn't met these people before. You know, those two guys turned up, you know, Skarsgård, who's very famous apparently. And uh, we didn't know, and we, we, you know, we kind of improvised that scene. But apart from that, it's not really that improvised. We just, are we such good actors that we, are, we have the ability to look like we are making up as we go along. Well, it's a great way to raise money to tell, tell all the investors that uh, they've got to give us the money now because the yes. locations are melting. Yeah. Uh, so focus the mind. And, and every uh, day when we were, when we were filming there, you did, you know, the location would genuinely change. It was moving. It was moving all the time. So you wake up, you, you spend the morning filming one scene somewhere and then you've been in the same place in the afternoon but the, the backdrop looked look completely different because you were move, you were moving on the ice it was it was uh, shifting pack ice and that's what we filmed on so it was uh, it was it was something that you absolutely had to be opportunistic about in terms of filming you if you did not finish your scene that day you would not finish it you can't go back tomorrow and do it again it's gone it was actually a real and present danger that you might die so you, without being over dramatic about it you had, you had to regulate your temperature you had to make sure that the cast and crew had food you then worked them like you know worked them very very hard we worked for 16 hour days and quite there were times when you get really fun because 
the sun would be going down. The sun would be going down. You say, look, we need to get this shot, and the sun's going down. And the sun goes down quite fast. And we have to get out, because the shadows would get so long that you had to film it in a certain way. Do you remember? We had to rush out to get the sun before it set. And we would go, quick, get on the back. And we all got on the back of the skidoo. And we were going so fast. And like, you know, everyone, everyone laughing our heads. We couldn't believe we were doing it. And we were going, whoa, really fast. Go, 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 mush, mush. We were racing against the sun. We were racing against the sun. We do our shot, and then we finish. We go, that's it, over. Well, I'd go home, and you'd go home. We'd have half a bottle of wine, just the pizza game. We're all going to bed. <laughs> get, back, get back up again tomorrow morning and then here we go again.